Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas presented by Dynamic Striking. We're here for a fight plan in Lower Manhattan at the Trinity Boxing Club, Frozen Manhattan. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at My Bookie. We're here to talk about Anthony Joshua against Francis Ngannou. Teddy, this is a big one. Yeah, you know what this fight really is all about? It's all about realizing that funny things can happen in the desert. This is about the money of Saudi Arabia, you know, they're, they're bringing everything over there with the big fights, the uh, fights that couldn't be made before until suddenly money showed up, and now all of a sudden promoters that never talk to each other are loving each other. <laughs> yeah, you know, and all that. It's funny how that money thing can <laughs> kind of work that way, you know? But funny things can happen, though, in the desert. Mirages where you think you see something that's an oasis and it turns out that it was just sand when you get closer to it. That's what this fight's all about. It's all about finding out whether or not in Ganyu's last fight was a mirage or was real. And there's no other way to find out than to go to the place where all mirages die. That's a place over there called the Chamber of Truth. No sand. No sand, baby. And sometimes no water. <laughs> Just you and the other guy. Let's go there and let's find out what the people want to know. Is What's it real it? or is it a mirage? Let's go. Let's go. All right, Teddy. What does Anthony Joshua have to do to beat the former UFC champion? You know what, turn the noise up. Yeah, turn the noise up, I'll tell you. Uh, what, what was done by Nganyu was incredible, no doubt about it. Nobody expects him to be that good um, in any way. Uh, I, I did, I, I, I was the only one, quite frankly, that gave him a shot. On ESPN, I actually said, I th think he's got a shot to win. He's so athletic and he's been in the cold rooms. He's mentally been in the, in the furnace. He's, he's been in a place where a fighter has to be. So yeah, he didn't box before, but he's a professional fighter. And he, he's faced what fighters have to face. He had that part down, that he knew how to deal with the fear. He knew how to deal with the anxiety. He knew how to deal with that threat. That, that is 75% of it. And he had that part down, that he could be, un, he could be comfortable in an uncomfortable place. He, he could he go in the fire and actually walk around, not panic. <clears throat> and, and that was the key for me, to give him a shot. But now, the thing that really was shocking on top of everything else was technically how good he was. His people did a good job, how, how good he was technically. But he's still the guy with one pro fight in boxing. So what does that mean to me as a trainer? Turn the music up, turn the noise up. What do I mean by that? In other words, he's still learning. He's still coloring by the numbers. When you got a guy still coloring by the numbers, he's still thinking it through and stuff. Well, get it to the point, get that stuff going on, that chaos going on, where he can't color by the numbers, where number one becomes five, becomes blue. Is that red or is that blue? Is that, uh, mix it up, turn it up a little bit on him. Confuse him a little bit, where he don't know one color from another, where he can't think it through, because he's still in the process of thinking things through, rather than just reacting. Mm -hmm. Fighters that have been fighting 10 years, 15 years, they're reacting. Guy who's just starting it, he's thinking it through. Take advantage of that. And one of the other things is that you wanna, you, you know, what do you know about him? You know he's got a great chin. My God, he got hit an elbow, <laughs> which, which he used to in his vocation, yeah. you know, in, in his trade. But he got a hit an elbow on the chin and just, you know, it was, it was like a raindrop hitting the windshield, <laughs> you know. Like, it, 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 okay, put the windshield wipe on, it's gone. And so go to his body a little bit, if you're Joshua. You know, uh, he, he takes it to the head, well, see, see if he takes it good to the body. And that's where our number one thing is gonna start, where we're gonna do a decoy, where we're gonna go to the body, we're gonna establish the body where you can use your jab. Joshua has a good jab. Uh, he's, he's got a strong jab. 
Uh, obviously, he's a much more experienced guy. He controls range really well. So you're going to be in Ganyu, and I'll be Joshua, and I'll use that jab to set him up. Give him that good hard jab to set him up, and then bump, bump, from the right distance, I'll go to the body with the right hand at the proper range, the proper, bump, bump, go right to the body. Now, I've not only affected the body, but I affected this, the mind, where I have you thinking of that. And again, I wanna play with your, with the wires up here a little bit because you're still in the process of needing time to think things through. So I wanna cross the green wire with the red wire and screw things up. So what I wanna do is get, establish the respect for that, right? And then do it again, you know, bend down, bend down here again, pop, and decoy, throw up top. Catch him standing straight. Cross those wires a little bit. If he can do that, well, then we talked about in the opening, maybe, maybe he can bring a little sand into the ring. You know, maybe <laughs> a little bit of a mirage. Either way, a win if he does that for Joshua. All right, Teddy, we talked about the decoy. Decoy to the body, go back upstairs. What else can Anthony Joshua do to get over on Engano? Well, what's, again, know, you know, know your opponent. Know his tendencies, right? You, you only got one film on him, but that's enough. Yeah, what's the one thing that Nganyu did really well? He can punch, you know, he can punch. And he scored a knockdown with that punch in the third round against Fury. And how did he do it? He did it with a counter left hook. Again, his people did a good job teaching him. He did it with, because he's a great athlete, he did it with quickness and explosiveness. When Fury threw something at him, he came right back. Fury had missed the right hand, he came right back with a counter left hook, caught him behind the ear a little bit, off the side of the head, and got the knockdown. Here's the thing. I think that he's gotten, through the fight as I watched it, he got carried away with that. I, I don't blame him, but Nganyu got to the point where he was looking for that the whole night. And it got, it morphed a little. <laughs> what do I mean by that? It was supposed to be a counter left hook. The guy throws at you, bang, you count. You make a mess or yeah, bang, you counter. Like, like say, throw, throw right hand at me, but bang, I come right back with the counter. But where it got a little bit morphed, where it got a little bit, a little dicey, was he was looking for it because that was his confidence, that punch. And Ganyu started looking for that punch so much that it was no longer a counter. He was starting to lead with it. And the one thing you don't want to do, if the guy didn't already miss, like throw the right hand. I, right, I come right back, I'm safe. I, I, don't leave it out there because a fighter wouldn't leave it out there. So you throw the right, come right back with the counter. All right, I'm safe. But if I start to, if you don't throw, and you start to lead. And again, he's still a guy in his first fight. He's green. If you start to lead with the left hook, now you could be the one who gets counted. And that's what I would look to do. I would look to get him to lead with the left hook. Because again, I, I really, you gotta know a guy's tendencies. I offer that fight, he's gonna look for that left hook. There's no doubt in my mind. Why wouldn't he? It, it worked for him against the heavyweight champ of the world. Get him to throw it at the wrong time where he's no longer countering with it. He's leading and leaving himself available. So the way I'm going to do it, it's one of the things that quite frankly, in, uh, I'm not doing a shameless promotion here, but uh, in uh, dynamic striking uh, uh, instructional videos with me where I teach this. I teach these kind of moves, these kind of setups, these kind of uh, tricks. Uh, in this case, uh, it's creating an opportunity for your own counterpunch. And what I call it is the push and pull, where you want to get, again, I'm going to be, I'm going to be uh, uh, Joshua, and I'm in there with, and you're in Ganyu, and I know that you're just dying to lead with that love, so you're dying. So I'm going to give you what you want. I'm going to let you think I'm giving you what I want, what you want, where I throw something where you can counter. But what I'm going to do is back to that mirage again. 
Sometimes it's a mirage, a little, a little trickery here, where I'm gonna push, push and pull, thinking, yeah, and let it go, just let it go right from there. So push, pull, bang, right back with the right hand. Push, pull, again, a little push, pull, bang, right back, get him to lead, get him to do what he thinks he did in the last fight where he had success with it, but get him to throw it when you want him to throw it, and then counter him with a straight right hand when he exposes himself. If you can do that, well, there's palm trees in those oases. There's palm trees, and they have money in them, not just coconuts. All right, Teddy, we talked about what AJ could do to get the win. What does Francis Ngannou have to do if he's going to beat Anthony Joshua? Land the punch like he landed on Fury, and this time finish him. How's that sound? That's genius, isn't it? Yeah. You needed to bring Teddy Atlas in to tell you that one. <laughs> you know, uh, land like you did against Fury and make sure this one is a little better. Uh, don't let him get up this time. And there's obviously truth to that. He can punch, he's got that eraser. That's the one thing that makes him, you know, a, 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 a live threat here with, with his lack of experience and everything else. He can, you know, I, I always say punches are born and are made. He, he was born he, with power. He, he, can, with, he can correct a lot of mistakes with one blow. So look for the opportunity, the delivery system of how he's gonna, that's the trick. How is he gonna land it? Just not just throwing it. He, he landed last time because he drew a nice counter. How, there's gotta be another opportunity. Again, starts with knowing the tendencies of your opponent. So know the tendencies of Joshua. Joshua likes a counter punch. Joshua likes to be aggressive too, but he likes to also, with his jab, step back, create counter punch opportunity. He, he's in and out, he is predictable. You just have to, know what he's predictable about. That, that he'll, he'll press in, he'll press out. That when his defense, you know, he'll move his head, but he likes to control range to make you miss. So I noticed that besides the power that he had in Ganyu, his technique was good. His, again, his trainers did a good job. And he was doing good with feints. I was kind of shocked. I was like, wow, this guy's using a feint. You don't see a guy that green using feints. So use your feint, and you're going to be Mr. Joshua, right? I'm going to be Mr. Nganyu. And what I talked about and set up before is that, yeah, Joshua looked to go behind his jab, be aggressive behind the jab, but he also looked to step out and create traps, create opportunities on the back end, counter opportunities, right? So what, when would he step back? He stepped back when Nganyu would throw something, go ahead, to, he, he stepped back to create a gap where he obviously could do some countering. So what you do is, being that I saw that you're good at feigning, get him to step out without getting out of position, without exposing yourself, without throwing a punch. Get him to go back, a little faint, get him to go back, do it again. And this time, because of your athleticism, because Nganyu showed that he is athletic. He didn't only have power, he had quickness. His feet were good. He wasn't all over the place. Again, the technique was good. He was taking the right kind of steps. He was keeping his form. He was keeping his balance. And he was able to close gaps. And he has that explosive tendency to him. Not only in his hands, but I believe in his feet too. Because again, he's an athlete. So take advantage of him being an athlete. You give him a little faint and you should, athletic ability, use those, those, those great genetics that you have and step with him, with the hook. Again, with your favorite punch, the left hook. Do it a little different this time. Step with him, so get him a little faint, boom, step with him. Again, a little faint, bang, step right with him. And what the trick is with this, do it one more time. So, a little faint, bang, step with him. The trick is throw the punch behind him. 
We're in football season, right? What do the quarterbacks do? They lead the passer. They don't throw the way he is. They throw it to where he's going to be. Well, same thing here. I'm going to aim this left hook. And Ganyu, what he should do is aim the left hook here, where he's going to be. Fade, get him to go, and throw the hook behind him. Let him walk right into it. If you do that, well, if you fight against Fury, and that's why you're here, obviously, you hit lottery. Well, this will be Powerball. I mean, like a oh, hundred times bigger than lottery. More money than you could ever dream of. Or maybe you did dream of it, and that's why you're here. All right, Teddy, what else can Francis Ngannou do to get the win on AJ? Well, again, he's a huge underdog, obviously, so any tricks that he can come up with up his sleeve, use them. He showed me, he showed us in his last fight how athletic he, he is, but he also showed how advanced he became, or how, what a good job his people did advancing him in a short period of time in the technical department. He showed that he can turn southpaw. Use that trick. Use it. For two reasons. One, maybe you catch him, you know, at the right moment by surprise a little bit if you use it at the right time. But you got to switch southpaw at the right distance. You do it right in front, you leave yourself vulnerable switching your feet. But his trainers know that because they did a good job the first time. And I would also use the southpaw against Joshua because if you guys remember, Joshua didn't do too good against the southpaw named Uzik <laughs> <laughs> two times in a row. He didn't do so good against that guy. So again, go lefty. So what I would have him do is, I'll be obviously in Ganyu, turn southpaw, and I noticed that it's all got to be about opportunity. And it's got to be about delivery system, not just having power, which I talk about all the time, the, the right delivery system, and understanding your opponent's tendencies. If they did their homework, which I did, by the way, to, for you guys, so you could go to my bookie and maybe make a couple extra bucks, you know, after the holidays are over now, I know that your bank accounts might be a little lower, right? After all those presents you bought, you might want to make a couple extra shillings, uh, as they would say across the pond, or my, my friend John Duddy, the, the terrific fighter, who's also uh, comes here to Trinity, would say over in, in Ireland, uh, a few shillings. Uh, I love that, that saying. I love all the Irish sayings but, and, and the, the inflection in their voice. But I would, I would look to turn southpaw and understand, again, the tendency that's going to give you the opportunity to do something from the southpaw position with Joshua. That tendency is going to come from Joshua, I notice, sometimes pushes the jab instead of snapping it. He's, he's got a good jab, but sometimes he'll push it, and sometimes he'll push it from the wrong distance. Instead of full, fully where he could get full extension, where he's safe from a counter, sometimes he'll throw from a little bit too close where you could actually counter it. And guess who did? A southpaw named Uzik. He actually did that. I'm taking a page from his book. Why not? It worked for him. Let's see if we can make it work for Mr. Ngannou, right? So when that jab comes from a little too close, there's a couple, yeah, just like that, there's a couple of things you could do. One thing, and I'm being Ngannou, he could slip it right here, bang, and counter, right? Well, oh, no, no, don't throw it straight. Don't try to miss me on purpose. <laughs> throw it straight. Let me make it miss. So, whoop, pop, kind of right there. Or you want to be really tricky? Now, this is advanced, but hit him a blind punch. Where, it's, again, throw it straight. Where, boom, slip this way. He never expected. Never expected because he'll follow your head with his eyes. He'll follow your head, and the punch is there. That's a good one. Do it again, one more. Whoop! If you can do that, well, again, we talked about 
oases, mirages, palm trees, everything, right? I mentioned John Duddy before. How about a leprechaun with a rainbow and with a pot of gold at the end of it? That's what we're talking about. Speaking of pots of gold, the line on this fight, Teddy, is AJ minus 450, uh, Francis plus 400. Is Anytime that... you give me a puncher who already showed that he can fight better than anyone thought he can fight, and you're putting him in there with a guy who has been hurt before, has been knocked out before, I think it's worth, if you're going to give me four to one, call me crazy, I, because I do think Josh Rue's going to win the fight, but call me crazy, I'll take that. I, I ain't going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I, I, I'll take that because he already showed me again that he's got power. He dropped the heavyweight champ of the world. Uh, his technique was good enough to know how to land the punch. His athleticism was good enough to put him in position to land the punch. Uh, I, I know he's mentally tough for you know, being in the cold rooms that he's been in in, in UFC and MMA. Uh, give me four to one. Go ahead. You want to give me four to one? Come on, come on, come on. I'll take the four to one. And, for uh, our, and I won't go crazy, but I'll take the four to one. And for our friends at MyBookie, you can check them out at MyBookie.ag. Again, use the promo code ATLAS for a 50% credit on your first deposit. The over-under is basically five and a half rounds, more or less even money there. I'm going over because I, I, again, I want to make it very clear. I take the four to one, but I think Joshua will win the fight. But is there a chance he gets caught? Like he got caught in the past where he got knocked out, you know, by Ruiz and, you know, he's been hurt before. Uh, yes, but I'm going to figure probably he wins. And if I'm figuring probably he wins, then most likely it goes rounds because and Ganyu already showed me he's got a great chin, and his technique is good enough to last rounds. So I, I, I like the over. I like the over. Uh, and you're telling me it was even money on the over? I'm surprised at that. I would have thought you had to lay something. Uh, you, my boogie guys, might be, uh, you might be in for giving out a lot this fight. Maybe, maybe if our guys, our army, and we have an army, if they listen to what I'm saying, and we're right, you might have to do a little of this instead of this. There you have it, guys. Check them out at mybookie.ag. Again, use the promo code ATLAS. Good luck to everyone. We'll be back after the fight to break down all the action. Good luck.